All right, and before we get too far, I'm going to go want to go to File, Save As. And we're going to go to our Houdini folder here, Hard Surface Test Assets, and I'm going to name this Houdini Scope 001. Hit Accept, and that'll save it as a Houdini file, HIP file. And now let's start breaking this asset down. The first thing you're going to notice is we have a big, ugly star sitting here, and that was because I sent over all of my subtools, and this is my null node or my null mesh that just had my file name on it. There's a couple ways to get rid of this thing. And remember, if we middle mouse click over this node here, you're going to see we have this two primitive attributes. We have that name attribute. So if we want to select by a primitive, what we can do is we can go over here to this select arrow. And you're going to see right here, if you long hold on that one, you're going to see we have primitives selected. And under the selection, you can go down here to the name attribute. Again, we got two primitive attributes. One of those attributes is this name. And now we have access to all of these primitives with their name. So here's the Houdini scope star. I can go ahead and select it in here, or I can select it in my viewport just by clicking it. If I want to, I can hold down shift and select multiple pieces here. Or I can just tap in my viewport and that'll deselect all of them. So let's go ahead and select that star and then hit the delete key on your keyboard. So what that's gonna do is gonna delete the star from your viewport. Now, what it really did is if you look over here in your node graph, what it created was a blast node attached to our GoZ mesh. So if we click on this blast node here, you're gonna see we have a group section and in that group section, we have at name equals Houdini scope one. So if we go back to selection mode here, whenever we selected the Houdini scope one and deleted it, it just created a blast node and assigned Houdini scope one as the object that I wanted removed. We can always go back to our original mesh if we want to. And that's the amazing thing about Houdini is with this node structure, you have built in, let's call it like file history. You can always step back through your node graph and go back to your original source. So here's what we imported and then we blasted. If we click this node here and just turn on this little blue area here for visibility, we blasted that star away. Now with this blast node selected, if we wanna remove more pieces of that, what we can do is we can click this little down arrow here and you're gonna have access to all the other pieces in that GOZI mesh or FBX mesh if that's the file that you want it to go with. So if we go ahead and say, you know what, I wanna add the base to that blast selection, just go ahead and click it and that'll remove the base piece of this file because it's got both of these selected. If I didn't want to do that, all I got to do is come up here, select that, and then just hit backspace. And now the only thing that's removed is the Houdini scope node. Now let's say I wanted to blast this base out and work on it individually separate from the other pieces. What I can do is I can go into my network view, I can type, I can hit tab, and then start typing blast, and I can drop a blast node in here, or I can alt drag this blast node out, and that'll create a copy. Let's go ahead and delete this blast node, and then we'll select this one. Now, because I alt dragged it out, it has the exact same parameters as the previous blast node, but I want to change that. So instead of this Houdini scope, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Go to my drop down menu here, and we're going to select the base. Now, the result that's going to give me is we have our original GoZ mesh. If I click this visibility here, here's our entire mesh. And then if I turn on visibility for this one and select it, you're gonna see it just deleted my base. Well, what I want is the base isolated by itself separate from the rest of these pieces. So what I'm gonna to do to invert that selection is go up here and just check on with this blast node selected, delete non-selected, and that'll go ahead and invert that selection so that just my base is available to me with this blast node. And then if we go back to this other blast node and turn on its visibility, let's go ahead and add the base again. So now we have the base of the object, and then we got the rest of the object here. Incidentally, if you want to use another way to see what attributes you have on your meshes, like we, like we did before, we went to the selection arrow, and we said select name attribute, and then this thing popped up. You can also middle mouse click on any of these, and you can see what primitive attributes are assigned to this object. You can also go to this plus sign here, go to new pane tab type and choose the geometry spreadsheet. This will give you a very good breakdown of what type of information is available on your selected node. If you go over here and again, hit this primitive button right here, you're gonna say we have a name attribute and a polygroup attribute. And then under the name, you have the name of the lens tube. And then if you just click and drag this down, you're gonna see every single piece of this thing that has a name attribute and a polygroup attribute that we're able to utilize in later operations. But if you don't need to see this, just go ahead and take this geometry spreadsheet and then click that. And then we can go back to our network view and we're back where we started.